and uh, we transition into the next panel. And obviously, having had Felix as a keynote speaker and Benji as a keynote speaker, we will talk about supermarkets. No, we will talk about AI and machine learning. So I'm welcoming on stage as well Martin, Fabian, and Brendan. And Felix, the stage is yours. Microphones will be in your hands in a second. Cheers, how are you doing? So, hello everyone. So um, now we're going to, to get down back to earth and we'll talk about how AI will transform the hospitality industry, what's the status quo, what's happening in the near-term future, um, yeah, and what the opinions are of the other panelists here on the couple of questions I prepared, but the questions should only be conversation starters. I want to hand over the, to, have, to you to have a lively discussion, so feel free to add your thoughts to what everyone else is saying, and I'll interrupt you if I think we are going in the wrong direction or any one of you um, doesn't have enough time to He's get his points across. We didn't rehearse. And um, so I think we should start with a short introduction, and uh, perhaps every one of you introduces himself with just two or three sentences, very short. Let's um, just start with Ben. Okay, so hi, I'm Ben. Uh, I, as I said, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, currently, I work at Quick Text, and we do uh, AI-powered chatbots for hotels. And uh, I'm looking for tips for my next travel to Mexico. So if you have any uh, information that, that you can uh, give me later, uh, don't hesitate. Brandon, you're next. Hi, I'm Brandon from Hera by Hotel Resbot, uh, mentioned by Benji, thanks very much, a couple of minutes ago. Um, so we work, we help hotels um, automate and support the reservation processes with a natural language understanding algorithm that can automatically read the full length emails that are coming into primarily the reservation department, but also the info at, um, from the hotels. Yeah, hello, my name is Martin Biermann. I'm the Chief Product Officer of the HRS Group. Um, in HRS, we build a procure to play a procure to pay platform uh, where we today handle roughly 40% of Fortune 500 companies. So we operate on uh, roughly 100 million room nights every year. And uh, other than HRS, I'm also uh, owning a venture capital fund with uh, CEO f CEOs from Zalando and uh, Adjust in Berlin together, where we invest into tech companies. Uh, hi, my name is Fabian. Uh, I just moved in from Singapore about a month ago. I'm the founder of Infinito. We are a human-centric uh, revenue management system on a mission to uh, democratize revenue management. Uh, what is human-centric? Uh, well, we're essentially solving the talent crunch by optimizing the human. So thank you very much. So as Brenton was the only person who showed up in the uh, pre-call of this session, he has the privilege to answer the first question today. There was a pre-call? Uh, yeah, there was. And, um, so um, I heard a thesis that it's um, more about work smarter with AI, and it's not about replacing existing employees. It's more about, we already heard a lot today about the challenge that there is a lack of employees, though it's more about replacing the not existing employees. And um, I wanted to ask you, what are the main opportunities of AI today to help companies? Perhaps you can tell about your solution, but also about other use cases that come to your mind. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm very passionate about this topic because I think a lot of people have this feeling that it is about replacing people, but I believe it's, it's absolutely not. It's actually about leveling up the staff and giving them automation and AI to support and do those things that they actually don't want to do or aren't good at them. So it's kind of a new team member, and I believe that we have to start thinking about this as teams of people and artificial intelligences working together. We often start at this point of human versus computer. I mean, Hollywood is great at this, right? Terminator and all the rest. But one simple thing, I mean, how many people compete with their mobile phone to remember telephone numbers? I don't know about you, but I've got one or two left in my brain. The rest are all outsourced to my tools. And I believe that's the kind of vision we need for 
artificial intelligence and automation. So in the Hera by Hotel Resbot process, we actually call her a collaborative robot. So we stole that actually from manufacturing because it's about an assistant to help the, the agents, to help those people in the hotel. So my vision for the future is actually the people running the show and AI doing lots of different things. I mean, we have here at the back um, a delivery tool to deliver um, goods, and, uh, goods to the room. And I remember working in a five-star hotel on the reception in the evening, sometimes when I first moved to Germany, I couldn't really speak German, so I had a night shift job in a hotel. And um, how much of a problem was it to actually just deliver towels to three different guests that recalled it? They, they asked and expected immediate service in a five-star hotel. But I was the only one there. How can I deliver these things? I needed these kinds of tools that are now there today to support me in my job. And I believe that's the direction we're going. That's the way we have to think about it. Mm -hmm. Let's pass over to Martin. Um, from the HRS perspective, so I have two questions for you. The first question is, um, what are the, the main value drivers in terms of AI today from an operational level within HRS? And second, if there would be an um, uh, AI fairy, what would be your wish? What feature would you would have next if the AI, AI fairy could deliver it to you? Yeah, I think that's two, two uh, very interesting questions. I think, first of all, um, I think most people in this room probably know HRS as the OTA, the booking tool, um, just a booking platform. But as I said, we, we meanwhile are uh, having a much bigger business in, in basically providing the outsourcing digital services to corporations, multinational corporations, um, Amazon, Google. I mean, uh, Amazon, they have uh, roughly a million travelers in our system today that, that operate on our platform. And it's, it's no longer about chatbot uh, technology or, or these kind of, um, I think, most common applications of AI or machine learning today that we see usually in the, in the industry of OTAs. It's more about understanding what is, what is, what is driving the business trip, uh, what are the, the, the obstacles during the trip. Um, so when you think about in a data model, you can describe a business trip with, uh, in our system, it's roughly 143 attributes. Um, and when you spend this out, you, you, you can reach uh, roughly 1.8 uh, times 10 by the power of 23. It's a, it's a very long number, mm -hmm. let's say, of different trip con like permutations that people can experience. And I think this is what, what is basically what we want to understand from where to where are people traveling, how are they traveling, and what are the expectations when they need to rest in a hotel, when they need to meet with other people in a hotel, or when they stay longer in an apartment and these kind of elements. And then what is their expectation towards the hospitality component from hoteliers? And this is where we want to um, basically make the link and inform hoteliers um, on this context to provide the best possible hospitality services to those travelers because that will ultimately um, make these travelers come back or consider the brand uh, when going to a different uh, destination. And so this is where we mainly focus on, on machine learning um, capabilities for the future. Of course, we have our call center, meanwhile, um, automated to a certain extent with phone bots. We have uh, chat bots on our website for, for customer service. We have recommendation engines to display the hotels in an order. But this is all the trivial stuff, I would mm -hmm. say. Um, what's really interesting is then like how can we leverage the information and data is the core currency that basically transacts the, the value that the traveler needs and that somebody is able to provide. And um, I think coming a little bit to your second question, also what um, Brendan said earlier, um, I usually, I'm usually i not usually in my company to make friends, so uh, that's why I'm a little bit the devil's advocate. Um, I, as I said, I also invest into different um, industries even. And I, when I look at the agricultural technology sector, for example, and I talk to people in the Silicon Valley who, who basically build tech companies around this, these guys tell you that the rest of the world has no understanding of what's coming at them um, when it comes to the full potential of machine learning and AI, AI mm -hmm. at least in this sector of agricultural technology. And I believe very strongly the same will happen to the hotel industry. I mm -hmm. think anything that is not facing the guest that is not the, like a direct enabler of hospitality as a perceived value will have to be eliminated because it's perceived or it's certainly inefficient on your PL. Anything you do in your back office operations 
from revenue management, from, from room allocation, from, from you know, cleaning uh, dispatch and stuff <coughs> like this, has to be automated because it can. Anything you can write down in the process on a two-dimensional paper um, will, be auto will be automated, full stop. Yep. Can, can I just point out the disparity between here the OTAs and how you're thinking, which is it's trivial to have a chatbot to automate the responses, to support the agents, to handle people faster, to support that faster. Benji and I provide these services to hotels, and I think you agree, it's an uphill battle in many cases to convince hoteliers to implement these services. But OTAs are already saying, ah, oh, that's old news, that's trivial stuff. It just has to be. It's already existing, we're working on the new stuff. I guess like in many other industries, the challenge here is the difference between the, the smaller players or the players that are not so digital yet and the ones who really use the digital uh, scale effects because they are bigger, they were first movers and so on. Which builds a nice gap to, the, uh, to get Fabian into the, the talk. With your experience from the more Asian Pacific background in the last decade, so do you see any, any differences? In the, in the Asian room, and what do you expect you learned from the Asian room in terms of AI, machine learning, some nice use cases or whatever that will most likely be seen in Europe in the, in the near-term future? Uh, coming back, it was like stepping back a century, right? Uh, coming here, all of a sudden, I was asked to pay by cash hmm? uh, or credit card, and I kind of like, since when do we do that, <laughs> right? Um, but I think we have to be careful what we want to take over and what we don't want to mm -hmm. take over. Right? Because mm -hmm. we're always fluffing around with the word AI without really fully understanding it. And Tom, Dick, and Harry are doing AI at the moment. Right? It's a decision tree for some of them. And everybody, hey, we're on the bandwagon. Right? Mm -hmm. But fundamentally, AI, and if we look at Asia, has changed the way the humans interact and are with each other, which is not a great thing. Mm -hmm. right? uh, there were studies in Asia that if you switch off the GPS, people don't know how to drive to work. Mm -hmm. Right? Because all of a sudden, that AI always drove them, always looked at them, and all of a sudden, it's like I take that away, and the human is paralyzed. Mm -hmm. right? uh, Google, going offline for two hours, sent shockwaves through the world. Mm -hmm. right? And I found myself going like, crap, when is this one going back? When is this one going back? Facebook, WhatsApp going, going down. Mm -hmm. right? um, so have have things been optimized and changed? Yeah, everything is on your mobile, everything is digital, everything is easy and convenient to do in Asia, but it also takes away your ability to think, hmm? right? To think about stuff and actually uh, go forward with items. Because uh, look at writing an email right now, hmm? right? 90% of the time, my email will tell me how the sentence ends. Right? It's, a, it's a great optimization. Right? I don't even make spelling mistakes anymore, right? which is fantastic. But do I now continue to learn how to do things differently? No, I'm being manipulated into the fastest point from A to B. Mm -hmm. right? Optimization-wise, it's fantastic. But it challenges us to see uh, what is actually our role now. Mm -hmm. right? Are we going down singularity? We're mm -hmm. screwed. Mm -hmm. right? Or do we actually rediscover and need to put AI into a place mm. where uh, we can take ourselves to the next level? Mm. And I think in Asia, it's, I wouldn't say it has, AI has made a fundamental difference, mm. but it's more the, they're quicker to adopt new technologies around mobile and stuff. Uh, right? And it, it, it pains me that we're still talking about mobile. Uh, absolutely. Right? Come on, we had an iPhone 7 in what, 2012, 2011, <laughs> right? And we're still talking about mobile. Yep. That's like nearly a decade. Yep. But you have to think as well about who your audience is. Like uh, right now we have uh, people that run hotels, maybe 10, maybe 20, maybe one. Okay, and you basically, you are, t you are from a point where you're really advanced and that's something we see all days because we travel around the world, we sell technology, uh, okay, the idea is that you have in front of you hoteliers that right now are doing manually the work of machine. And I mean, it's really important to, uh, to be aware that uh, there are like big decisions that will need to be made down the line. 
But right now, specifically in our industry, uh, we are um, like at the beginning of something that will be very good before like, it's time to really ask yourself uh, ethical or, uh, or, or, or societal questions. Because like, we have a business that have not changed in 20 years. And it pains me as well to, uh, to say that hotels are still embracing mobile. But it is a reality. Because mobile is not a thing. It's a mindset. It's a mindset where uh, a customer can ask anything, anytime, through any channel. And you have and hotels have still, for, I'm trying to be like a nice guy now, so I, I won't say uh, any bad word, but they are still discovering uh, how to use and leverage that. And uh, you have to be in their temporality. Because if you live in, uh, in Asia where uh, everything is already, well, actually, in, in o Asian hotels, it's another reality. They are sometimes still in the Middle Ages. Mm -hmm. So actually, everyone has his own temporality, and AI affects each one differently. Correct. Well, and you make a, a very good point here. There's a difference between mobile and mobility, mm -hmm. right? Correct. I think if we're separating it like this, it becomes easier because mobility is what we're craving not the device that we're going through. And people now all of a sudden go and like, I don't understand voice, mm -hmm. right? Voice is pointless. Why, why would I do, why would I ask the question if I can just Google it, right? Mm -hmm. And I say, go and ask my daughter. Mm -hmm. She has conversations with Google all day long, mm -hmm. right? Google play this, oh Google, what time is it right now? Oh Google, I love you. Oh, I love you too, right? Mm -hmm. She invited Google to her birthday party, mm -hmm. right? Good, it's our responsibility, rein it in. But it's we're looking, we're so focused on looking at stuff through our lens mm -hmm. that we're actually forgetting the use cases uh, for the future. And Jack Ma, I think, was the guy that said, uh, if you build something right now, don't build for now because you're going to fail. Build for in five years' time and you succeed because then you're ready when everybody else is, is riding the wave. Uh, we started building four years ago. <laughs> but also, well, think about, <laughs> also think about the message that we have in our industry, all the um, conferences that, we've, that we have where, we, where, where we're showing, like, look how things are today. I think that um, uh, if, like, we are going to embrace, like, we, are, we still have to embrace AI in our industry. And the thing is, how do you start? How do you make it the smart way? And, uh, you know, because we can have big considerations about, uh, about anything, but the idea is... Um, how can we, like, how can hotels, uh, like, get the right angle, get it right from the beginning, and also gain new skills? One of the skills that is missing, for example, in, in, a, like, in hospitality in general, it's innovation management. Because, basically, if you're, if you're, if you're innovating like an idiot, you, you, you do everything, okay? You, you, you embrace everything and, and you do it wrong. What you're saying is that uh, this innovation is good, but it should be managed. And that is a skill that is not existing in any um, hotel group, major hotel groups that I know of, innovation management. I mean, Accor had uh, some people there that were like just trainees, but it was not serious. And I think what you're saying is, um, is about that as well. Like uh, uh, hire innovation managers that are not people that are just out of school, pay them well, because they will be your uh, guarantee in the future that you will not do the wrong choices. 100%. Um, we wanted to put something out on social media. Mm -hmm. Right, and I sent it our our marketing department very young, and so they came back and said like I had to ask my parents what that picture was in reference to. Right, it was a kindergarten cop. Mm -hmm. Right, for me it was like how can you not know that movie? Right, huh? and it it showed on my part the disconnect between what we have right now and what we see as innovation. What we forget is what for us is innovation is moving from fax to email. Hmm? That was a great innovation. For our kids, it's no issue. You hmm. give them an Apple, you give them an, I uh, sorry, an iPhone and a, uh, an Android phone. They know by just opening it up what operating system works and what can be done and what cannot be done. Hmm. And what the differences are in swiping up, where you find stuff. My wife just moved from Apple to Android and she is having a really, really hard time because it's just not where she was conditioned to go. And in hospitality, we kind of do self-fulfilling truth, right? We don't innovate, so we don't innovate, right? We, we, we don't jump on the next one. We don't, we don't, we are afraid of failing in the front. And I think Ben said it earlier, when you do innovation, yeah, you, you're going to fuck up at times. 
right? That's okay. And it's going to go down. And it's great. See it from a positive light, right? Yeah. What is success? You innovate it, right? You screwed up. Happy days. What did you learn about it? Oh, not doing it again. Fantastic. Now move on to the next part. It's our job as a tech community to actually make it so easy for you to bring in that technology that you A, don't feel threatened that you're going to be out, huh? right? And B, that you feel empowered. For me, AI has a single purpose to make the human better. It's and kind of funny because that's something I experience in a lot of industries that they think, you talk about challenges in the hospitality industry, and you think these challenges are typical for the hospitality industry, but I can tell you from other clients that they, in completely different categories, they face the same challenges. And it's often that we talk about mobile, we talk about digital on the one side, because there are really complex problems and complex challenges we need to somehow put into smaller pieces so that we can solve it with our organizations. But the clients, on the other hand, are so far apart of that because they don't think in that categories. So we are playing completely different ball games there. This is, I guess, one of the big challenges. And the next thing is that you said, um, Fabian, that Successful companies need to think three to five years ahead to develop successful products. But the reality at probably most hotels and most, at least SMB companies, is that they are behind the status quo today. Yeah. So how to get them to that point where they are, are trying to reach today to get to the, to the next level. Well, so, oh, and I, I would like to hand over the question to, to, uh, to Ben. OK, to, so um, how did we get there? Basically, um, you see, I did a podcast with Daniel yesterday. We had to redo it because he said, no, like people don't want to read books. They don't want to learn new things. They want to, uh, they want to get easy answers to uh, the questions. So actually, if you want to, be, to become good at innovation, you need to understand how it works. OK, you need because you have techniques that you can use to manage innovation. I try to share with you some uh, decision making things that I used to make like decisions that for me are uh, uh, like the decisions that give me food every day, you know, um, and you need to master this. No, but it's not going to come from outside. If you want to learn uh, how to manage innovation, you need to actually work on it. You need to read books. You need, to, uh, you need to, 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 to understand what makes innovation work. And you need to do it fast because uh, tech cycles, like mobile, it was a 10-year tech cycle that started 10 years ago. I mean, it's, it's almost finished already, but it started 10 years ago. And it's only now that you're starting to adapt. So it, it, computer was, what, 40 years? Uh, mobile is going to be 10, 15 years, and what's going next is going, next is going to be five years. So like, learn today, because it's going to go faster and faster. And at some point, it will be impossible for you to catch up, and you will be obsolete. I think we're already there. I think the technology changes are so quick that the human can't catch up with it. So we might mm -hmm. actually have a conundrum that we have all those tools out there, but nobody knows how to use them. Mm -hmm. Or that you're applying for a job, you go to your job, and then they go like, oh, by the way, your job is redundant. You're now doing this. Which brings us in, is it IQ, EQ, or AQ, right? Mm -hmm. So the uh, adaptability quotient. And I mm -hmm. think coming in part of the innovation, it's kind of a mindset. It's not something like, oh, guys, come on, let's, let's innovate right now, right? Mm -hmm. it, it happens naturally, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, what hotels need to understand is you budget for one year, you don't budget for five years. How do you know where you're going if you always look that close? Right? Mm -hmm. And second, you need to be agile. It's one thing that COVID taught us is whatever works right now means sweet fuck all in 10, uh, in 10 months' time, or in five months' time, or even in three Sometimes weeks' in time. 10 minutes. Yeah. Right? That, 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 by the way, was the perfect thought because we only have two and a half minutes left. So for the wrap-up question, so, and you already answered the final question, I think to give the, the audience an advice to what does the industry, hotels, or whoever need to do today to get ready for tomorrow in terms of AI and machine learning? And perhaps you just continue with Martin. Yeah, I was, uh, I was just listening to the conversation, and I found it very philosophical and, and, and very, uh, very appealing. Yet, to this point, uh, how, can, how can this industry actually uh, equip itself and, and, and uh, modernize itself? Because most of the hotel partners, I think, in the previous sessions, we, we heard that 80% don't really use revenue management or revenue-enhancing software uh, technology today. 
So I think the, 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 the age in which this industry is, is still light years uh, um, behind what, what currently other industries like the e-commerce industries um, have, have been going through already, basically. And I think um, to this point, is, I think it's about an investment strategy in the end, it's not necessarily, um, which is tied up to the, to the innovation strategy. But it's about um, where do you want to invest your next euro or dollar um, that you might have out of your business from, from, from your P&L profit. And the question is, do I want to invest this into a manual hand in the back office? Do I want to invest this into an upgrade of my um, hotel room experience? Or is it maybe about the technology layer? Because I think that's where usually everything that hotels want to do in the digital world usually stops today because the infrastructure that they currently employ is just extremely old, um, has no connectivity, um, and cannot make the data flows happen that actually are necessary in order mm. to fuel all of these different nice search, book, in-stay experience that we want to, that we want to establish. Because if in, in like an on-premise installed PMS system, which software version is five years old, is your common denominator, you're screwed. So I think that's where it all needs to start. Where's your intelligence? Where's your data? How do you consolidate it in one place? And how do you make sure this is cloud ready and can in real time transact data to whatever player it is? Be it an OTA, be it um, uh, your payment service, be it uh, your, your chatbot engagement service. I think if this route is not managed properly, um, I think everything else is just um, a dream. Okay, then we have 30 seconds per person left for Brandon and for Ben. Just one quick win. What should hotels do today to get ready for tomorrow? I, I think the biggest, most important thing is start. Do it. It's just like Ben said 20 years ago with the internet. Those that jumped in and got those crappy websites and tried it and started learning are still the ones that are still the leaders in that segment, in that area today. Because they started early, they made the mistakes. You're going to make the mistakes. You're going to mess up. Learn from it and improve and continue. Thank you. 30 seconds. OK, Ten. so since you're going to start, start with small things that are going to generate wins. wins. Think about the Maslow Pyramid. What, you're, what you want to do is sell more, reduce your cost, and optimize service. All the rest is bullshit that you don't need to focus on right now and have kind of a, a long-term um, idea of what you want to achieve. For example, what is mobile about? Try to understand that instead of trying to understand what mobile is going to be uh, five years down the line. So instead of trying to kind of predict and have a clear picture of uh, how things are going to be, try to surf the wave and, and kind of adapt uh, step by step because nobody, has, uh, nobody knows uh, what is going to be the temperature in one month. But we all know that the climate is changing. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>